everyone, it's Joni here with Barn Sheep Designs. Um, I am just kind of in a snow day right now. Uh, it's kind of really weird. We're in Oklahoma, so our weather all time is always fine. But outside it is like six inches of snow. It's actually really beautiful. So while Hayes is napping, of course, I am going to get some home projects done. Um, it's just a real simple project. When I first started these, and I'll show you the before and after, it's just some chairs that I reupholstered. So this is what they look like. <laughs> really beautiful green. Just gorgeous, right? Uh, yellow green, lime green, I don't know. Anyways, um, and I have a beautiful white fabric. Um, okay, so I found the fabric that I'm reupholstering them in. Uh, it's real simple. Let's see, several cut out. Um, it's like a really light linen, uh, but it's got some grays mixed in with it. And I really love it. I did this, I had another table I refinished and I redid the chairs and I used this white on them and I loved them. Um, but I sold the set because I found another set of chairs and a uh, table that I really love that's really antique um, and really quality made because I'll show you whenever I go through these chairs uh, how good they are. But I thought this was just going to be a simple project, but I got into it and I noticed that a lot of the springs in these chairs were broken. About four out of eight chairs were broken. So I reupholstered one ch ch like seat chair and then I went and I started discovering a lot of them were broken. So I went ahead and stripped them all except for this one. This is the captain's chair. Um, Cause I want to show you how I did that too. Um, but I thought, well, instead of reupholstering all these and replacing the springs and then some of the older springs break, uh, about a 50, 50 chance, I am just going to find some webbing and um, do it that way. So I have a short kind of clip of ripping these apart um, down to the bone and they look like this after they're done and these are springs. Um, you can even see on some of these springs that are still like here they're starting to bend and everything and this is where they're breaking at. Um, usually you would think the springs would actually be the ones that break but it's a really high quality uh, chair because this is beveled, um, which is awesome for like fabrics and reupholstering because you don't have to like stretch your batting up over the edges. And I'm not professional or anything, but I just wanted to show you guys how I do it, um, how I've been taught how to do it, and um, how easy it can be to just do them at your own house, at your house um, with a few tools. So yeah, this is it. And I will show you the after whenever we get done. All right guys, so basically for all this old fabric, I just used a flathead screwdriver. The nails or the tacks in it was super easy to pull out, which is like the first time I've ever come across chairs that do this. Luckily it was all eight chairs. Um, but pliers also come in handy. Um, I've come across some that have a lot of staples and layers of fabric and staples on top staples or whatever um, pliers and patience <laughs> so just you'll figure out your rhythm um, how how each chair is different how to pull it apart and everything so and I just work on top of the same fabric whenever I start pulling all of it off um, I really want to make sure after I get this dust cover off that I pick up all the little tack nails and I throw them in the trash. Um, I have a separate bucket, a metal bucket for nails and screws and stuff and I always throw that, that in there. Or keep a trash bag by, um, just make sure you don't have any of those nails running around after you're done with it because it can kind of get messy. But since this fabric is so dirty and nasty, I just work right on top of itself basically. And um, you'll see whenever I go to pull the burlap off, it uh, has like a hay or straw uh, type material under it. 
and yeah, it's filthy. So I just basically pull this uh, old burlap off right on top of that fabric, shake off any dirt nastiness, and I fold that sucker up and chunk it in the trash can. <laughs> Next, I'm going to take these springs apart, and same method, I just kind of figured out what worked best. I just ended up using the flathead after this and actually pried it up on top of itself. And then after um, I get all the springs done out, I take those little tack nails off where the burlap was. So you need to be careful on the springs. If they are still like have full tension in them and you go to release it, it will snap back um, or pop back and you have a screw or something flying. You wanna make sure you wear eye, eye gear for this part. So next I just clean up all the nasty dirt and stuff before I really start working with my material because I don't want all that on there. And I'm going to start with my webbing. I already kind of tried to get the rhythm of this. This probably took me about five minutes to figure out the rhythm, but you'll learn as you go. Um, I, of course, add staples at the top. Um, make sure you stretch enough webbing to the top where you can fold it down over um, and I'll show you what I'm meaning at the end of this video this little clip I should say um, but yeah it takes a it takes a minute or two to figure out especially when you're trying to video and you can't go off I wanted to go off the edge of the counter so much but I knew you guys couldn't see in the video if I did that so I was trying to yeah, keep you guys in mind and also try not to stab myself with this webbing tool because it is super sharp. So keep that in mind. Um, definitely don't want to get poked by it. But I just use my staple gun and I have quite a bit of tension on them, just enough to make sure it's not real super loose. You don't want them really baggy. And three rows um, worked for the size of this chair. And I use a lot of staples. Um, I probably used about five strips of staples or um, I wanna say probably over 2,500 staples for the whole project, but five strips each on of the chairs, each of the chairs. So make sure before you start these projects, you stock up because that's what I ran into is I kept running out of product or I didn't have something in stock and start blah 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 but And then you're gonna fold, fold the excess over like I was talking about. You wanna make sure you had a little excess when it, before you stapled. Um, that's just securing it in place. Um, just gives it a little extra hold. You can tell right there I didn't have enough excess, but whatever, it worked. I was not going back and fixing it and <laughs> pulling those staples out. So next I just take um, more webbing and I alternate uh, through the chair. And like, don't get frustrated with yourself if you don't get the hang of this on the first or even the second chair. It took me a good, good while to get the rhythm of how to staple, stretch the webbing and everything else. So um, even people who do it a lot, <laughs> it takes a rhythm to get into. It takes a while to get into the rhythm.
So next I'm using just burlap. Um, this is basically to help fill any of those little holes where uh, your webbing crosses. Um, because when people sit down, obviously it's going to stretch that webbing and create a gap. So this just kind of helps fill those holes where your foam doesn't start to actually fall through those holes, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so it's just an extra measure. So over time, you're not having to go back and fix your chairs. And all I do is I line up my uh, burlap where I have a little excess, same as the webbing. I'm gonna fold it over and staple it again but I hand tighten. You don't need to stretch this super tight or anything. Just hand tighten, and then you're gonna cut your burlap to fit, but make sure, like I said, you leave a little excess so you can fold it back over and staple back on top of itself for that extra security of holding. And then after I get them all folded over, I am just gonna fold the corners. It doesn't have to be real pretty or anything because they're all gonna be covered up. So I just fold them basically left to right or right to left and staple. I cut off any excess, like I have a little bit of extra here and I cut it off. So next, I'm gonna take a small piece of Dacron. Um, you can use like cotton uh, or anything like that. And it, all it is, is just to help with that air pocket that you get from the fabric or the foam when people sit down. There's just not so much as of an air gap, if that makes sense. So I just put that for a little extra measure. And then, of course, I take my foam pad that I have and I measure off where it's a little bit too long. And I'm just gonna take my scissors, which I highly recommend, some fabric scissors. These, I got stuck with some little kid scissors. <laughs> um, and I was not going back to the house to get regular scissors. So anyways, highly recommend a good pair of scissors for this project, for sure. And while you're doing this, you can use your hot glue gun. Um, well, I use a hot glue gun because obviously I'm pregnant and I usually use like a, the 3M fabric spray, um, but I can't with being pregnant. I just don't want to smell that extra fume. So I just use a hot glue gun. I nail, I, I glue it in place. All you're trying to do is make sure your foam pad just stays in place while you're working and just over time. So you don't have to like glue the whole chair down crazy, use like four sticks of glue. That That's not necessary. Just enough to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna take my Dacron, I'm gonna measure off, make sure I have enough excess to fold over the edges. And the best way is to work from the center out. Um, you just kind of get a feel for it and then you'll tack around all four corners center out so i just use about two to three staples per side and then i work um, my way out and then on the corners i fold you want to make sure you don't have any of like especially when you do your fabric too same concept you just want to make sure you don't have any creases on that edge of the seat so just make sure you fold it enough to where it's not going to have a bunch of bulk on the side and also, here's a little tip. The screws that go into your chairs when you attach your, your uh, seat chair, your seat pad, um, you wanna make sure you leave those holes where those screws go open. So you'll see here, I'm gonna cut around where there's some little holes and I'm actually gonna staple that Dacron fabric back so it doesn't get in the way of when I attach these uh, chair pads to the seat, it doesn't get in the way of the screws. So next on 
your fabric, you want to make sure that your pattern is where you want it um, and it matches your other chairs. It's it. <laughs> If you're doing a vertical stripe, you want to make sure all the ver the stripes are running the right way. So um, before you start stapling down, you definitely want to make sure that. And then before you cut it also, you want to make sure you have excess to stretch and um, get your fabric uh, attached properly on the chair. And I changed the angle because I'm right-handed. <laughs> And I just wanted to be able to show you guys I'm kneading the fabric. I don't, I pin the bottom, the bottom side um, closest to me, and then I knead the fabric up. So I just kind of use my hand and I push it up and um, pin the other side. So, and I work from the center out, and that's the best way to do it. And you just keep working back and forth. Um, and then whenever you do get, uh, like close to the center, you want to start getting your sides in place too to where it's not shifting on you. So I just usually use one or two nails or staples in case I need to adjust them later. And you need on that too. So kneading is kind of, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's like a weird term, but I guess you're just kind of like pushing that fabric up or that extra foam up and um, it's just to help avoid any like nippling or bumps on the sides of the chairs um, so if you don't have it tight in certain areas you're gonna have like this bumpy area and it, it'll show too um, on the sides of the seats so I just keep doing that and I keep working out and I leave my corners last. Like I don't usually uh, staple any of my corners down until I have both sides of the seat finished with uh, staples. And then whenever I get close to the corners, I start kneading them down too. And it's same as the Daycron, you wanna make sure you don't have a bunch of excess fabric folding over on the corners. You'll just, um, you want them on the underside. So you don't want them showing on the pretty part, you just want it all showing on the underside, if that makes sense. And then after I get the for, uh, corner folded, I will trim the excess um, and staple down the corners again, um, just that little extra fabric, keep it in place and away from those screw holes like I was talking about with the Daycron. So next, I am going to take my dust uh, cover. Um, you can use any kind of cheap fabric for this if you need to. Um, if you don't have this material on hand, it's totally fine. You're, they're not gonna see the underside of the chair. It's just basically to help catch any debris um, and just finish off the chair nicely. So I just fold over the dust cover, um, the edges, and the same as the burlap, I just hand tighten 
and I don't need a whole bunch of staples um, all over the seat. I just, you just need to uh, place it, fold it, staple it in a few spots, and trim up any excess if you have any. guys so that is basically the end result um, besides putting it on the chair um, I'm gonna scotch guard these obviously with about to have two little ones running around in the house and one messy boy already not just talking about my husband <laughs> um, these need scotch guard so I'll be interesting to see how they hold up against the kids but um, it was real simple, obviously, taking them apart. I've probably never had the easiest, the easiest chairs that I've had is these when it comes to taking them, taking stuff apart because I have come across some really nasty, layered on fabric, dirty, a thousand and one staples um, on some chairs. So it just depends on the chair that you got and the one that you're reupholstering and um, what what bones it has already so it obviously if you don't have the springs and it's just a solid wood piece you don't need the webbing um, or the burlap uh, maybe just a little foam pad or uh, Dacron pad to help with the foam pad um, just when people sit down it, there's not so much like a gap if that makes sense um, and then your fabric of course so and your dust cloths which your your dust uh, cover is totally optional um, I mean obviously people aren't gonna be looking under under the fat like the chair so it's just totally an optional um, but you've seen how dirty the chairs were before and nasty so it's it's good to have if you have the option um, you can use other material too to do the underside uh, so basically when I did my webbing, I bought my webbing tool off of Amazon, which I'll link below. And I highly, highly recommend a staple gun, um, an electric staple gun, or you could even use the compressor gun. But I've used the handgun before, and it is a pain. Um, I did six chairs, the chairs that I did my linen fabric on before. Um, I did six of those with multiple layers of a handgun and my my hand was completely worn out by the time I was done so be sure to invest in one if you're gonna do a whole bunch of chairs you're looking to refinish or re reupholster uh, a few chairs in the future too so it's good to have on hand um, and then obviously my fabric and the uh, webbing and all that um, I'll link below but I just want to tell you guys thank you for watching um, be sure to subscribe if you liked this video give it a thumbs up and um, share with your friends so we can continue to grow our channel I really appreciate um, the support and I uh, wish you guys a good day good evening um, or good night wherever you guys are from Thank you.